Hello and welcome to O-Worm. Today we'll be taking a look at the anatomy of a mouse. A mouse dissection is a perfect way to show all the organs in the mammalian body. You will be able to see the circulatory system, respiratory system, and the digestive system through this dissection. So first, let's take a look at the external anatomy. So here is the ventral side, here's the dorsal side, here's the anterior side, and here is the posterior side. So we'll take a look at the anterior side or the head first. This is the vibrissae or whiskers. The mouse's whiskers help it sense the world far better than it could with just its eyes alone. When a whisker touches an object, it bends and sends a message to the mouse's brain. As the mouse moves through the landscape, it feels all the objects and textures near its face with its whiskers and constructs an image of the world around it, kind of like you would if you felt your way through a dark room. Next, here are these large incisors. You can't see them that well, but they're here. So if I... right there. So mice are gnawing animals, and these incisors are continuously worn down. Because of this, the incisors will continue to grow for as long as the mouse lives. So here are the eyes, one on this side, and there's one on the other side, right here. And we can also see the ears, one here and another one on this side. And the external part of the ear, which we can see here, is called the pinna. So here is the anus, near the base of the tail, which is the exit for the digestive tract. More anterior to that is the urogenital opening, right here, which is the opening for the urinary and reproductive systems. You can determine the sex of a mouse by examining the distance between the urogenital opening and the anus. In males, the two openings will be further apart but since it's pretty close here, we can tell that this is a female mouse. And we can also see the tail here. In mice, tails are used for temperature regulation and for balance. Now let's take a look at the internal anatomy. So first, pin down the mouse by placing a pin through each of the paws. Next, make an incision at the center bottom of the mouse and cut towards the neck. And then make some horizontal incisions by each limb to open up the cavity. And then we can pin these flaps down. Now cut again, this time all the way towards the chin, and pin down the flaps as you go. So the upper cavity here, enclosed by the rib cage, is called the thoracic cavity, and the lower cavity here is called the abdominal cavity. They're separated by a flap of muscle right here, called the diaphragm. First, let's take a look at the abdominal cavity. The liver, right here up top, is the largest organ in the abdominal cavity. You can see that there are several lobes, so here's one, here's another, and there will be a total of four lobes. The liver is a jack of all trades. It performs several important functions in mice and in humans. This is why liver disease can be so deadly, especially so because the liver's functions are so complex that nobody's been able to invent an artificial substitute, and liver failure can be fatal in days. The liver's main functions are to filter and detoxify blood, make proteins, store energy, and to produce bile. Bile is used to digest lipids. 
Think of scrubbing a very oily plate. The water will just wash right off unless you have some soap to break up the oil with. Bile works similarly in the digestive process, breaking up lipids so that it can be absorbed. Below the liver is the stomach, which is this pouch-like structure right here. The stomach is where food begins to be broken down by chemical digestion, as the stomach releases digestive enzymes and acids. The stomach is also the site of mechanical digestion. It contracts to break up food particles. Next to the stomach, we can see the spleen, which is this structure on the side right here. The spleen plays an important function in the immune system and also plays a role in breaking down old blood cells. Next to the stomach is this structure here, which is small and kind of hard to see. This is the pancreas, and the pancreas has two main functions. To produce digestive enzymes, and to produce hormones. It produces digestive enzymes that break down food and neutralizes the acidic pH from the stomach, and releases these digestive enzymes into the small intestine. It also produces hormones like insulin, and releases it into the blood. Now, down here, all of this is the small intestine. The small intestine is where the breakdown of food is completed and the absorption of nutrients take place. All the work that the stomach, pancreas, liver, and so on have put in would be for nothing if the body won't be able to actually take the nutrients in. The small intestine is very long and coiled, as you can see here, to maximize surface area for nutrient absorption, and in humans, the small intestine is actually three times the length of your body when stretched out to its full extent. The small intestine is packed tightly and attached to the abdominal wall by mesentery tissue, which is the thin film you see here. Now below the small intestine is the colon, which is this tube you see here, that extends from the small intestine and leads into the anus, which is right here. The colon is also known as the large intestine, and its main function is to absorb excess water. It not only has to absorb the water from the food that you ate, but also the water in all the secretions made by the various digestive organs along the way of digestion. After this, the colon also stores the waste until it's ready to be eliminated via the anus. So now I'm going to cut out these digestive organs so that we can take a closer look at the kidneys. So the kidneys are these bean-shaped structures that filter the blood and produce urine. So here's one on this side, and here's another on the other side. Descending from the kidneys, you can see these ureters. So this tube right here, and another one on this side. The ureters transport the urine from the kidneys to the bladder, right here. So the bladder fills up with urine, and stores it until it's ready to be excreted via the urogenital opening right here. The bladder is bigger when inflated, but right now it's deflated. Right next to the bladder, here's the vagina, inside here, and here's the uterus that leads up from it. The uterus is V-shaped, so there's one segment here, and there's another one right here. And the uterus leads up to the ovaries, as you can see when we follow it up, so here's an ovary, and here's another ovary on the other side. This is a female mouse, so that's why we see female reproductive organs. A male mouse would have male reproductive organs. Now let's move up and take a look at the thoracic cavity. I'll just cut through the ribs and very carefully pin the flaps aside to expose the thoracic cavity. So first, let's see the two lungs here. 
There's one on each side. There's one here. There's a couple of lobes. So you can see there are a few lobes here. There's another lobe there. And on the other side, here is another lung. Right here. And you can see it also has a few lobes. So the lungs function in gas exchange, taking in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide. Down here is the diaphragm, which is the muscle that helps the lungs inflate. When the diaphragm contracts, it moves downwards, which creates negative pressure inside the thoracic cavity. This results in air rushing into the lungs because of that pressure gradient. In the middle of the lungs is the heart. But before we get to the heart, take a look at the structure sitting just on top of it. This is the thymus, which plays an important function in the immune system. The thymus produces T cells, which is a type of immune cell that helps destroy infected or cancerous cells. Now here's the heart, right here. The heart pumps blood throughout the body to circulate nutrients and oxygen to all the cells and also to dispose of waste from the cells. The mammalian heart, found in both mice and humans, has four chambers. Alright, that's the end of the mouse dissection. Thank you for watching. Here's a fun fact about mice to send you on your way. Like humans, mice are very social animals and have been observed using facial expressions to communicate. Researchers have identified five basic facial expressions, pleasure, pain, disgust, fear, and nausea. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more.